practice meditation because we want a happiness that's reliable and harmless, harmless both to ourselves and to the people around us. We want to find a happiness that doesn't depend on the ups and downs of life, because otherwise it's like riding a roller coaster. Now some people get a thrill out of a roller coaster, but the roller coaster of life is one that's built without any safety precautions. There's no building code to make sure that people don't get hurt. Everybody gets hurt one way or another. There comes a point where we get thrown off the roller coaster and everybody dies. But the Buddha discovered there's a happiness that doesn't require that we take the downs with the ups. It doesn't require that we have to depend on things outside. It's a happiness that comes from within. It enables us to have a sense of well-being regardless of what things are coming in by the eyes, or the ears, or the nose, the tongue, the body, or our thoughts. So it takes work because it's a skill. It requires that we train the mind. Training is never easy. It's hard enough to train a dog or to train an animal. There was an elephant trainer who came to see the Buddha one time and said, your elephants are plain enough. You get to train a wild elephant. He says it takes about seven days to figure out all the tricks the elephant has. Then you can deal with them. With a human being, though, it's, there seems to be no end. But it turns out there is an end. You can master all the tricks of your mind if you work on the skills. So the first skill is to learn how to set a good intention in mind. We'd like, when the meditation starts, to think oh, the mind will settle down and there'll be nice states of bliss and light and whatever. And that's setting, up a, that's setting yourself up for a fall. If you're focused on the results, but you're not focused on actually creating the causes or putting the causes together in the right way, you end up disappointed. So the first thing to do is to remember we're here to learn a skill that requires that we learn how to get the causes right, and then the results are sure to come. The Buddha talks about a sense of ease, pleasure, rapture that can come from getting the mind focused. So we're doing this because we want the results, but we know that if we want the results, we have to focus on the causes. And the cause is very simple. You stay with the breath. Focusing on the breath is not all that hard. The hard part is going to be staying. Take a couple of good long, deep in and out breaths and notice how it feels. And if long breathing feels good, keep it up. There come a point, though, when long breathing doesn't feel so good anymore, and then you can change the rhythm and texture of your breathing. You can make it heavier or lighter, faster, slower, deeper, or more shallow, shorter, longer. You can try in short and out long, or in long and out short. There are lots of ways you can experiment and see how the body responds and see how the mind responds. You remind yourself that if the breath is healthy, it's going to be good for your body and for the mind. It's a resource we have that we usually don't develop. The breath comes in, goes out on its own, so we feel we don't have to worry about it and we focus on other things. But it turns out that there are many different ways it can enter, many different ways it can go out. And they have an impact on the body, and because of that they have an impact on the mind. Make a survey of your body to notice if there are any places where, when you breathe in, there's tension building up. And see if you can consciously relax those spots and still breathe in. 
Or notice that when you're breathing out, you tend to squeeze the end of the breath or push it out a little bit too long. See if there's a way you can allow the breath to stop when you don't squeeze it. So before you start squeezing it, you stop the out breath. And there'll be a sensation, a slight sensation of floating for a bit, and then you know it's time to breathe in again. So you don't have to make a sharp line between the in breath and the out breath. Just breathe out until the you reach the point where you don't want to push it out. And when the body's ready to breathe in, allow it to breathe in again. If the mind wanders off, and it probably will wander off, be quick to catch it. And remind yourself that whatever the thought it's wandering after, you don't have to complete it before you come back. And nine times out of ten, the thoughts that you wander off with are old things you've seen many times before, like old movies. You know what Humphrey Bogart's going to say. So you don't have to listen to it again. And for most of us, our movies don't have Humphrey Bogart. They have people you wouldn't ordinarily pay to watch. So you remind yourself you don't need those thoughts right now. You don't need that kind of entertainment. You're trying to explore something that's going on in your body, an area that nobody else can know, how your breathing feels. And you can begin to see what kind of impact it has on the way the body feels and how your mind feels. If the mind feels like it's being trapped here in the present moment, it's not going to want to stay. It's like trying to keep a child in a house. If you simply lock the windows and the doors, the child's going to figure out how to shimmy the locks and get out. But if you give the child all kinds of neat things to play with, the child's not going to go. So in the same way, play with the breath. Notice how you conceive the process of breathing. Everyone has a kind of cartoon idea of how the breath comes into the body, how it goes out. And that cartoon idea actually has an impact on how you really breathe. It's as if the body were a bellows and you have to squeeze it in, squeeze it out. And the breath can come in and out only through the nose or through the mouth. But try to think of the breath in a different way. Think of it as an energy flow in the body. It flows through the nerves, it flows through the blood vessels. All the nerves go out to every pore. So when you breathe in, there's a sense of energy coming in and out the pores. And when you can think of the breath coming in and out from all directions like this, it helps make the, the breathing a lot easier. You get the whole body helping. When the Buddha gave breath instructions, he started out by saying, try to notice when the breath is long and notice when it's short. And as you get sensitive to the way the breath feels, then the next step is to breathe in and out, aware of the whole body, because that gives you a much bigger foundation and allows the breath to become a, a whole body process, opens up parts of the body that were starved of breath energy before, it makes the mind feel less confined. If you find it difficult to be aware of the whole body all at once, you might go through the body section by section. Start down around the navel or start anywhere you like. Just figure out a way to get through the whole body. Navel, solar plexus, middle of the chest, base of the throat, the head, down the shoulders, out the arms, down the back, out the legs. Survey how the different parts of the body feel with the in-breath, with the out-breath, all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out. And if you notice there are any patterns of tension, allow them to relax and keep them relaxed all the way through the breathing cycle. If you have trouble figuring out which parts of the body are more tense than others, you might compare your left to your right side, because all of us tend to hold more tension in one side of the body than in the other. And sometimes it's counterintuitive. There may be a 
sense of pain or stress in one side of the body, but it's actually the other side of the body that's overcompensating. So try to explore these patterns of tension in your body and where you can sense them and can relax them, then make it your sport, make it your game. You're playing with keeping those parts relaxed even as you breathe in, even as you breathe out. And you find it opens whole huge areas of the breath energy in the body. This is the beginning stage in getting the mind trained, i.e. getting it to settle down in the present moment. We want to be here because a lot of important things are happening here, but we don't notice them. We overlook them. The whole reason why the mind creates pain for itself, creates suffering for itself, is because it's not paying attention to what it's doing. So you want to get clearer and clearer about what you're actually doing here in the present moment. For, for that, the first thing, of course, is to get focused here and not allow yourself to slip off. Because the mind does have its tricks. You start watching the mind in the present moment and it points off to the future, it points back to the past. So don't let yourself be deluded and saying that it's the finger is pointing to the moon, you've got to look at the moon now and just look at the finger. So why is that person pointing to the moon? What does the mind not want you to see in the present moment? Sometimes its intentions are skillful and sometimes they're not. It likes to hide its unskillful intentions from itself. So this is one of the things you're going to see as you get to know the mind in the present moment. It's got some good capabilities, it's got some good qualities, and it's also got some qualities that are not so good. And we want to develop the equanimity and the equilibrium so that we can accept the fact that both of those kinds of qualities are there in the mind. Because it's only when you see them and admit them that you can do something about them. You begin to figure out why is it that even when things are going well, the mind can still create suffering for itself to say nothing of when things are not going well. How does it interact with sights, sounds, smells, taste, tactile sensations? Are there more skillful ways of interacting? In fact, a lot of the skills you're going to be learning as you deal with the mind are things you develop as you're working with the breath. You need mindfulness. Well, you've got to be mindful to keep the breath in mind. You need alertness to watch what's going on. You need discernment so you can figure out what's skillful and what's not, what's, cause, what's a cause and what's an effect. So you learn these skills in a rudimentary way as you work with the breath, and then you can start applying them to more subtle things going on in the mind. And that's when you really find that there is a potential for true happiness in here. Once you develop these skills, you can see through the mind's subterfuges, you can see through all its various tricks. You can see through the walls that it throws up inside itself. You can deal with all the different committee members in the mind, all the ones who have all these different ideas of where happiness should be and why you shouldn't be here sitting, sitting here watching your breath right now, but should be thinking about something else. If you deal with those voices and can get past them, then you find that there are other subtler ones that have a more pervasive but kind of background effect on the mind. You can begin to deal with those, see through them basically sort things out inside. This is how you get to be in charge. The better voices in your mind take over the ones that do already have some wisdom and do already have some alertness and mindfulness. They get stronger. And it turns out when they're in charge, everybody's a lot happier. There are a lot of members that are going to resist this, but they're, they're foolish. Just like the human beings you see around you, a lot of people would be better off if they learned how to change their opinions. But you can't go around 
straighten everybody else out, but you can straighten your own self out, all the different members of your mind's committee. So these are some of the skills we need to develop, and you develop them how? You develop them by, to begin with, to learning how to stay with the breath, with a sense of ease, with a sense of well-being. And that provides the foundation for everything else you're going to need to know and to master in this skill of training the mind. <laughs>